Can someone please call an ambulance? Smoke Reverser is the latest album from OCs, and I'm sorry, this album title is so fucking great. It's called Smoke Reverser. That's such a sick name. I, I don't know what... Oh. The cover, too, the cover is so, like, intimidating and just apocalyptic and fucking cool. Like, man, in regards to just, like, presentate, like, the, the title cover, hey. Good shit. <laughs> contender for cover of the year, contender for title of the year. On Smoke Reverser, the newest record from the OCs, or... or, 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 or Whatever the fuck you want. You can expect to hear a series of psych and garage rock tunes that rely pretty heavily on plenty of very grungy and devilish riffs. Uh, some pretty bustling sinister drum breaks across the whole album as well. Quite a lot of organ solos and electric piano solos on this album as well. Uh, the musical palette here doesn't really stray too far away from the typical mold of psych rock and shit. It plays pretty closely to the beaten path of, of just the, the psych rock playbook, but uh, they do manage to pull together some pretty characterful and fun songs on this album with this musical palette. There are some pretty intense intelligently built tracks to me. The song C, I think is a good example of that. Pretty vibrant and irresistibly fun, groovy, catchy song on the album. It's one of the dancier cuts on this record. It's, it's got a pretty interesting structure to it as well, the way it kind of pairs up uh, these pretty, I guess, kind of groovy verses and the way it's kind of juxtaposed alongside some more very tense instrumental breaks. It made for a pretty interestingly structured and paced song. It kept my attention, you know, it never really felt stagnant in my opinion. And, and, and front to back, this whole track just carries a really sort of cheerful tone, uh, which makes it uh, quite a, a standout moment on the album because uh, quite a lot of the material here does feel like the cover, very just apocalyptic and sinister. Especially the song Overthrown, which comes right after the song C. Uh, you know, that, that juxtapositioning is pretty, pretty harsh and brutal. Uh, easily the most apocalyptic and existential and brutally harsh song is definitely Overthrown. From its destructive lyrics that seem to just sort of be questioning everything, <laughs> you know, in a, in, a, in a fit of just angered confusion, to the throttling drumming, the uncompromisingly just panicked and unhinged vocals, to, it's an absolute roller coaster of a song. And I think it does quite a lot with its brief two minute 40 second runtime and that's actually one of my problems with this album has got to be with the runtime I, I guess it is pretty easy for me to say oh yeah okay it's, it's too long it could be trimmed down but I think the time that this album spends with some of the longer cuts here like the, the 12 minute long track the seven minute long track it's clearly trying to use its time to sort of build a, a strong resonant atmosphere and tone you know it's, it's a very ambitious large in scope psych rock odyssey is what this album's trying to be but it's just my problem with the the length of this album is just in what they pull off musically, what they achieve instrumentally, is rarely ever exciting. They never really break out of the psych rock mold, and it just makes for a pretty unengaging listen. Nail House Needle Boys, though, is a pretty fruitful song on this thing. The kind of um, eclectic electric piano chords on this track gave it a pretty nice fruitful feel. The grungy riffs that pop in in the song are also pretty provocative and menacing. Uh, Abysmal Urn is one of the more upbeat and exciting moments, too. Some pretty catchy riffs on this track. Last Piece does have a pretty interesting progression going on, the way it kind of starts off, kind of chugs along sort of lulls you into this false sense of security before hammering down into this pretty aggressive uh, drum break that is one of the more I guess you know in your face and brutal moments on the album. The guitar solos all over the song flies bump against the glass uh, the use of whammy and feedback effects and shit made for a pretty uh, a fun song overall I like the way the organs in the back just gave the song a little bit more emotional nuance as the solo sort of what the fuck can I'm trying to record. The song just kind of continuously developed and blossomed into, into really interesting areas and the organs in the back just gave it all that much more impact and weight uh, but yeah yeah, I find it really difficult to get excited about most of the material on this album, unfortunately, especially with that 12 minute long song, which can fuck up because nothing interesting happens at any point during its entire 12 minute run. <laughs> it was just totally uh, boring, in my opinion. It meandered so much, it just failed to prick my ears up at any point, which is kind of a shame because it kicked off especially with a pretty fiery drum break that just, it was just bustling through in a really energetic way that I thought it, it signaled to me that I was like okay this is going to be like a really exciting 12 minute long psych rock epic that's going to be so crazy and amazing but uh, yeah it didn't exactly knock me flat. The only flat thing that happened was the song. <laughs> There were a few pretty unnerving winding guitar solos that were kind of cool. There were a few points where the drums sort of picked up in intensity and they were sort of building up and it was kind of interesting. But uh, for the most part, yeah, this was just 12 minutes of nothing. And it just seemed like a really inessential song despite being, you know, what seems like the album's big centerpiece. Just the way the songs are paced generally on this album is just, they're not very dynamic or anything like that, really. The songs just normally, they just kind of find a pretty safe pocket, a pretty safe groove within the first, like, 30 seconds or so of the track. And then they just kind of run with that without really introducing many sort of interesting dynamic changes. They just kind of stick to the typical psych rock playbook, uh, and there's not really exactly many unpredictable instrumental flourishes on these songs most of the time. It's just a bit of a safe listen. I think Moonbog was easily the safest on the album, though. This track was so unengaging to me. Like, the guitar timbres on this thing 
uh, were so grating and cheesy. Some of the solos, the way they were mixed in, was fucking awful. And vocally, the lead singer is like barely trying on this fucking track. And lyrically, it's clear this song, I think it's, tr I think it's trying to build just this really twisted, paranoid sense of just lurking, unnerving danger, but nothing about the song instrumentally uh, has really enough weight to it, in my opinion, to fully realize that atmosphere. So unfortunately, uh, ultimately, this album just kind of felt like a really bloated and safe set of pretty indulgent psych rock songs. Uh, yeah, musically, it doesn't really ever shoot for anything all that memorable, it seems, to just be kind of playing it safe the whole time, and it's an hour long, and it just wasn't. Uh, anything that really resonated with me in any significant way. It's an album that clearly wants to capitalize on a very large and ambitious scope, but it just fails to hold my attention uh, for the most part. So I'm gonna give it a five out of 10. Uh, that's how I'm feeling on the OC. Fuck, OC. I can't not call them the OC. I'm sorry, it's fucking hard. It's not hard, I could, I could, I could do it, but like, shut up. OC is their new album, Smoke Reverse. So those are my thoughts. Go check it out if you want. If you're looking for some good old psych rock, you know, if you're a fan of King Gizzard and Ty Seagull and shit, this might be up your street. But yeah, for me, it's a five. So those are my thoughts on that cool cool fucking bye <laughs>